Welcome everybody to Red G Fox. There's Red. What's happening, Red? Okay, just a quick reminder. If you see me every episode in this, it's not because I don't know how to wash clothes. I do have different shirts. This is my themed shirt. Fred has a flannel similar to this orangish, brownish blue type. And so it's kind of my shout out to Fred Sanford, you know, where I'm trying to wear a flannel like he does most episodes. So that's now that that's out of the way, let's get to today's Friday Fun Fact or Fun Fact Friday. I think that's how I pronounce it. And today we're talking about the show Sanford and Son. Now, I'm not going to cover facts like, well, you know, this act, talking about the actual things. We're going to talk about the show in general today. Point here, if you've ever followed our other channel, I do have other videos on there where we did break down fun facts about it. A lot of this covers it. A lot of these things, when I looked this up, I already knew most of them, not all of them. Not that I knew them from before. I knew them because I've done research on this before. And so let's get right to it. Fun fact, Sanford and Son. It aired from NBC on January 14th, 1972. That's the debut. All the way to March 25th, 1977. Six seasons. As I stated, NBC. Not ABC as some have mentioned in the past. They've tried to tell me in comment sections, hey, it was ABC. They were... No, no, no. We'll cover where maybe there could have been confusion on that. But started on NBC. There's even episodes where they filmed on the NBC studio. Remember Lena Horne? It was based on, we've covered on other shows, Steptoe and Son. That is the British comedy that started it all. I've only seen a little bit of that. Pretty funny. I mean, heck, the first season is basically the same as this, Sanford and Son opening season. But as, as much as it can be funny, and it kind of like if you are a fan of The Office, the British version and the American version, they, you know, America expands and goes its own direction. And I, I think both are good. I like America's version better. And here, nothing, nothing is better than Red Fox and Damon Wilson, Sanford and Son, sorry. Steptoe and Son though, it ran for over, I believe 13 seasons. So double what Sanford and Son did here, but I think a lot of that, as we'll find out, probably comes from Red Fox, as you've seen in previous episodes we talked about. The theme song was done, most of us know, by Quincy Jones. Brilliant, brilliant guy, knows everything about it. And the song is actually called The Street Beater. Yeah, that's what it is. The Street Beater. I never knew that. And looking this up, I you know I know it's out there if you actually look into it, but I didn't even know there was a title to it. I just always called it Sanford and Son theme. But it's called The Street Beater, and it's been in other shows, used, including, which I remember watching, in The Simpsons. They have it where the guy comes out, and they play the theme song, then he walks out, and it's the theme song from Sanford and Son. So it is in other shows as well. They borrowed it, copying it. Uh, number of episodes. For some reason, when I look back, I always think... Oh, there was like in the 60s, 68, you know, maybe 72. No, think about it. They don't make 10 episodes a year and there's six seasons. There is 136 episodes. That's a lot of Sanford and Son. And yet I still feel like I want more. You know, that's why I love the show Sanford that it carried on. But I feel like there's, I need more. I need more. So 136 episodes. Now it did produce three different spinoffs. Can you name them? Almost all diehard fans can. But they had the show Sanford, which I just talked about. It had the show Sanford Arms, which continued after. We'll cover how it got to Sanford Arms and why not continue with just Sanford and Son. And then the final one was Grady. Yes, we'll cover more on the Grady show. Not specifically a show, but how it got to that point. I, I actually enjoy that. That was a short-lived show. I thought that was pretty good. Now, it finished. This is interesting. In the Nielsen rating system, it finished in the top 10 five out of the six seasons. Now the sixth season was the worst, but even then, I, I, I think it was drawing 14 million homes per week. You look at shows nowadays, Two and a Half Men, I, I only know that because I remember hearing the numbers that that was getting like a little over a million something per episode. So you watch that and you go, okay, that was a top rated show at a million per episode, yet Sanford and Son in its worst year was 14 million. I know if you think about it, you go, well, duh, there's the internet. There's now the addition of 700 channels. We didn't have that back then. And I still tell my kids, hey, man, we only had like nine channels when I was a kid. So if something was on and it, it was decent, you're watching it. So that's why it was much bigger ratings. I still think if you put something in the same quality as Sanford and Son, heck, half America probably couldn't even take the joke. So maybe not. But it's better than anything out there now. But it, it was on there for 10 for uh, top 10 for five of the six seasons. Now. It was number two. It made it all the way to the second best rated show two different times. And it only trailed to All in the Family. And that was in the 72-73 year and the 74-75 year. So, 
hats off, man. To, to be on be a show, top two, the number two rated show, you know, most watched. And at the highest point, we'll get to that. I have those numbers. Let's see. 74 and 75 season was so great on Friday nights. Listen, oh yeah, in the 70, 1974-75, that year, it was so, it was like NBC was it. It was it on a Friday night. Think of, even back then, think of all the things. Friday night, even for me as a kid, it was going out with friends, going to the movie theaters, playing sports, ding dong ditch them. If you're an adult, going to clubs, disco dancing in the 70s. I mean, there are a thousand sporting events. There are so many things better than to do to sit at home. Yet, Sanford Son was getting in 74-75, they were getting, I think, like 18 to 20 million views for Friday night. Friday night, that many views. These are the shows. Number two was Sanford and Son overall, the Nielsen rating. It was the number two show. The number three show on the Nielsen rating that year was trailing right after Sanford and Son. And that's what you know is usually when you have a hit show, you put a, another show that could be good. It's going to draw all those fans who just stuck around, and it's going to increase it. And so Chico and the Man, that gets a lot of bump from San Francisco. That was number three on the rating. So you had Chico and the Man. Then you also had, later that night, The Rockford Files. My mom loved that. I remember watching reruns of that later as a teenager. I enjoyed that show. Rockford Files, that was number 12. And then finally, it was called Police Woman. I never seen it. If you've seen it, comment below. I didn't even bother to look it up. I don't know what it is. Have you ever seen Police Woman? Is it a good show? Was it something you enjoyed? Did you remember watching that block? I wasn't even alive in 74, 75, so I can't comment on Police Woman. But that was them. They had four top 15 shows, including two and three, on that Friday night. Man, they owned it. NBC owned it back then. What a great lineup. Now, in 2007, now all these are fun facts about things you might not know, just history about the show as we go through it. I will cover things about the show in general as well, but a lot of these, they're all bullet points. You know, in previous episodes, you'll see me, I'll talk, and, I'll, and I'm still talking, but you know what I'm saying? I might elaborate more on some things. This is going to be a bang, 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 because it's there's so many to fit. I mean, I probably could have put another 50 on here, but I'm like, we only have so much time. So let's get it. 2007, Time Magazine had Sanford & Son in its 100 top 100 shows. So that's great. Top 100 shows of all time in the history of television, Sanford & Son made it as well it should. We know a lot of us here on this channel, it's got to be top five for us, if not number one for me. And I'm pretty sure it's number one for you guys as well. Season four, oh yeah, had the, the, the highest rating. Season four for Sanford and Son had the 20,276,000 people were watching per episode. I mean, I think that, no, that's actually households. So you probably could double that, right? I mean, who sits, you don't have 20 million homes with a bunch of single people. So think of all the people that watch Sanford and Son. Man, t that was where it was at back in the day, being on TV. I mean, you got the movies, but if you had a hit show, be on TV, that was a way to get your face all over. We talk about now like TikTok and all this other nonsense, YouTube. And even if you get a million views, you know, that's nothing to the to one episode, 20 million homes have it. Think of the... 50 to 60 million people watching so and very impressive then we get to oh and season four too remember in the 70 oh no this was the year before that was uh the 74 season red box walked off set in 70 1973 74 season remember that he had a salary dispute he wanted more money and people were you know he his people were saying oh no he's just not feeling well it's a health related maybe they were using that to cover up nbc but really he wanted more money now I don't blame them. I never blame the actors. If you were a big fan of what's happening, you knew multiple times rerun uh, Frederick Stubb. No, that was his name. But rerun in, in real life, he had his name changed. But he was the one who continued to hold out because he wanted more money. He felt, hey, I was a big part of the show. All of us should get more. But in here it was red and you're the number two show. You got to stand up for yourself and get some money. He walked up, said he wanted 25% ownership uh, of, the, of the show and he was making $19,000 per episode. So at that time, and he deserved every penny, if not more. So he does that. He did hold off. And then here, here's another fact. We all know this. While Fred was gone, Whitman, Whitman Mayo Grady, he came in and filled on the show. I have to be honest. We've gone through some of the top in our other channel. We went through polls throughout the public. Hey, what do you vote? vote. We had hundreds of votes, thousands of votes on these things. And some of the top episodes, like top 10 episodes voted on, especially of season four, were not the, the Fred ones. It was Grady and his income tax, and it was uh, Grady, what was the other one? 
Grady with the, or the, the social security check. That was one of the favorite. And Grady, when he gives the wild parsley and uh, Rollo and Lamont are like, that ain't wild parsley, that's marijuana. And they give it to the cops. Those were the two favorite episodes of season four. So when you look at it, you go, man, Grady could really carry. And that's what led because he did that. And NBC's like, hey, and they weren't lying. He still kept the ratings going. People still watched that season when Grady was holding down the fort. Now, they could have been coming in saying, hey, we'll see if Fred's back this week. There is no internet. There is no social media, Twitter. Red Fox isn't saying, hey, I'm coming back next week. None of that stuff. So we didn't know. So it would be on. And, But still, I mean, you cannot. My mom and I used to watch that show all the time. And she loved those episodes with Grady. And you almost feel like, not you wouldn't, but you're like, I wish they would have put Grady and his show in a better situation. They took Grady, who worked with Lamont and the whole Sanford and Son scheme, and then put him in a, an atmosphere and environment where it was Grady living family life, like you know, like family ties or something. Can you imagine if uh, on family ties, if the dad was replaced with Grady, you'd have the goofiness and then the seriousness. I just, I like the show Grady because I like Grady, but all the characters felt like it was a, a Saturday morning show when you watch Grady. His, his granddaughter, even Dwayne from What's Happening, right? Uh, Haywood Nelson, he's in it. I like him, but they all felt like they were just, you felt like they were in a TV show as opposed to Sanford and Son. You feel like it's real life and you're just, you're there living it, watching it through the camera. And I, I felt disappointed because I really think had Grady been put in a better show with it could have been him and maybe Bubba either, right? Maybe Grady living in an apartment with Bubba, something, and you put more screwball comedy. I think that would have been better than doing and even have Rollo people drop by then they did have Esther I'm talking way too long I got to say that for another day the Grady anyways I apologize I hope you did not turn off the show for this so Grady had his own spinoff so Fred ends up coming back he returned with season four and got paid twenty five thousand dollars per episode right per episode and he got a twenty five percent of the producers net profit so he got a six thousand dollar increase and he got what was it ten 25% of the producers. So man, he's making hand or money hand over fist. So it worked out for him, you know, and it worked out for the show. The show didn't dip. Grady got his own show. Everyone was happy, probably than NBC who had to lose some money on it. But what a great time. That's what happened. So if anyone's ever watched who's not a diehard or did not know the history on it and you're watching now, hopefully you learned something new. The show had uh, the same, oh yeah, this is another one. I'm sorry, sometimes I'm reading it because there's so many. If there was just five, I can memorize them all and just talk. But when there's so many, I got to try to glance at it. The show for the entire six seasons had the same time slot. That's that's power right there where they go. You know how a show maybe like in season six when it dipped, you go, well, let's shift it. You know, halfway through, let's let's shift it to Thursday night. The ratings on our Thursday night's not doing too hot. And this is a new hot show. They left it Friday at 8 p.m. the entire six seasons and it cleaned up. I mean, wow, wow. That's that's a that's an impressive show. That shows staying power and the power of Red Fox, Damon Wilson, the the writers, the producers, and the Aunt Esther, Lawanda Page, all those people. All right, the show had the same. Red left after. Oh, here we go. Now this is where you might get some people saying ABC. I don't know if ABC ever bought rights to show reruns, but after the sixth season, and we covered this on the Red Fox fun fact last week. But after the sixth season, it was ABC that came and started chirping in Red's ear and saying, hey, we can give you a variety hour. We got a big payday for you. Why, why, why did they? Now, the reason is because ABC was getting their butt kicked by Sanford and Son through all these years. I covered before how Brady Bunch ratings had been dipping and there's other things that go into it, of course. You know, the dad was tired of it. He wanted to go off. So shows don't always end for one specific reason other than like someone passing away from the show. But with Sanford and Son, it was so big that year, the I think 73, 74, that Brady Bunch ratings just dropped off the map and Sanford and Son cleaned up. And they were basically like, ABC's like, okay, you maybe they didn't, they, we're done. We're done and the, this cast was done and it was over. So some people say Sanford and Son killed the Bradys. So ABC is like, hey, how do we attack NBC? Let's take their top prize, one of their top prizes. Let's get them on our channel. So they came to Red and they told him, let's do it. And he was offered the contract and he went on to that show the variety hour and, and it didn't it didn't work didn't work for abc they ended up spending money didn't work for red didn't work for sanford and son so disappointing now after he left the show was supposed to continue with lamont this is a fact i looked into and i've heard this before from other previous actors and in interviews it was supposed to still it probably would have just been called i mean do you call it sanford and son or is it 
Sanford or is it just Ann Son? Would you call it just Ann Son? Probably not. But the show was supposed to continue. And even after Le Fred left, Red Fox left, and it was going to be Lamont, they said, hey, Lamont, you want to do it? He said, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. I'll be the lead show. Let's let's run it. We keep the whole cast. I'll still do it. He wasn't happy Red Fox left. We've covered that already. And he did say that that he goes that he wanted uh, more money. So it was a contract dispute. They they didn't want to pay him this. And he said, I need to get this, if, especially if I'm going to be the lead. They're like, no. And it was back and forth. And then he said, forget it. If you're not going to pay me what I want, I'm out of here. And then they said, fine. The show's done. Canceled. So the show was canceled after that. And that's when they did Led Into Sanford Arms. I've watched a few episodes. Never a big fan of it. You know, like I said, it's the same people. But when you get kind of like the goofiness and it's not really... Uh, more mature it feels like it was less mature humor just never n didn't hate it just not something to work it's on i'm gonna go rush and turn the tv on like i would sanford and son so that's what happened with there after he left now lamont had oh here's another fun fact about it we we talked about this last week and i wanted to say i was saving it for another episode in the show with lamont he gets like i think it's the second episode we find out his middle name is grady lamont grady sanford but did you know in season six when he's on there, what was the episode called? Uh, anyways, the lucky streak where Fred goes on that streak and starts winning all this money and stuff. And they find out and Lamont's talking. He's all, you know, because he's always saying I'm, I'm Fred G. Sanford. And he's like, you know, for someone who always emphasizes on their middle name, why didn't you and mom ever give me a middle name? And Lamont's like, or Fred's like, we did. We did. It's Lamont. And he's like, my name is Lamont, Lamont Sanford. And he's like, no, we never gave you a first name. So it contradicts from season two, one, episode two, where it says his name was Grady. So at the end, what do you say? That's a good trivia question. That's a trick one because you could put Grady or you could put Lamont and watch out for that question coming up on our channel one day. You know, I don't not maybe not tomorrow, but it'll come up and I want to see the answer on that. That'll be funny to see people's reaction. So I would have to probably say the first episode would be the truth. So if you look for this trivia question, and you've seen this far in the episode, remember, it's going to be, his middle name will be Grady, because it says it in the beginning of the show, the last season towards the end, how are you going to change it now? You could change it, but the original one was what said it. So there's another fun fact. Now, here's an interesting one that some most know, but just in case, I got to put it out there. Did you know that Fred was in his late 40s playing a 65-year-old? And even crazier is Whitman Mayo, who played Grady, was... In his early 40s, you know, Grady actually, if I see Grady and Fred next to each other, I think Grady looks older than him and he's younger than him by about like six or seven years. Grady just looked older, you know, next to him, whether you dyed the beard and all that stuff, the wit, makeup, whatever, he just looked older. So hats off to them. They both played their part well. And I think that's a good idea. More shows should do that because then you can keep it going longer or an eventual spinoff later on, right? Because if they're really 65, you know, you never know what could happen, how long you can make the show last. So that was true there. And another, no, I'm not going to get into that one. Fred in the show, fun fact, Fred had six sisters-in-law. I, I forget. I don't even count them. That's why when I saw this, I'm like, hey, that's a good point. Let me bring it up. Six sisters-in-law. Esther. We got Flossie. I remember her. Minnie. I remember her. Ethel. I remember her. Rosetta. That's the one I forget. Now, I do remember because we just covered her in the, the episode where Lamont gets married. But yeah, Rosetta and Hazel. And we've seen the right there, you can see the picture of Hazel when she gets the cake in her face. I love that. We just went over that one in the last, uh, like I said, that Lamont's gets, supposed to get married. So those two, I would have, I forgot. I always thought there was like four, right? Ethel, Esther, hey. When actually, you know, they're all sister-in-laws, but can you imagine? That means, that means Elizabeth actually had six sisters. What a gigantic family. Seven sisters from there. I wonder if they had any sons. Obviously not, they would have mentioned it, they never did, but just a little bit of information for you. Grady, oh, here we go. Grady's named after Damon Wilson. Did you know that? I didn't know that until reading this. Grady's character in the show is actually named after Damon Wilson. His real name is Grady Damon Wilson. So in the show, we got Grady Wilson and we got Lamont Sanford. But did you know that, that Grady's name was actually, they took Grady Damon Wilson and that was, that was his name. So... Pretty cool. That's an interesting fact. TV Guide listed Sanford and Son as number F Fred Sanford. I'm sorry. In Sanford and Son, they listed Fred Sanford number 42 in the top 50 TV dads. Now, I didn't look at that list. Go look at it and see if I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to bump Fred up over a bunch of them. You know, because I'm not. I'm not. I'm talking over Al Bundy. I'm talking over who else? Another dad in there. I'm. Jeez, think of other shows. 
Uh, I don't know, but I'm putting him above all of them. I would probably have someone like... Now, I'll put him over Ricky Ricardo. He, he's hardly around his little son in that show. So anyways, not better. Andy Griffith is better. I think Andy Griffith is a better dad than Fred Sanford is. But still, he made top 50 all-time TV dads. So respect for that, TV guide. This is a good one. Now, this is something I've noticed, but I never really paid attention or thought about. In season two, episode 21, Home Sweet Home, right, where Fred's going to go to the retirement home. You can actually see, right, remember when Fred moves in his room? A lot of diehards know this, but it's not a great picture, right? It's in the 70s, you know, so you're not going to see this high-def photo. But Fred actually, as he's setting his stuff in his new room, he's going to live in this old folks' home, sets out a picture of Elizabeth. And you can actually get a glimpse. The only time in show six season, 136, was it? 136 episodes, you get a small little glimpse into what Elizabeth looked like. Only time. So I guarantee you, go up and look it, check it up now, and you can see what... I'll put it on here to try to see the best I can get. It's not going to look pretty good. It's probably going to be fuzzy. But yeah, Elizabeth is actually in shown in one of the episodes of Sanford and Son. And our final point, this one, I have heard many different answers to this on a trivia question. The actual website, Sanford and Son, on YouTube, the official channel for it, put it, and they never listed the answer. That's one thing. Sometimes I go, they'll put things on there and they'll never give the answer. It's just all the fans answering it and that's it. But they put a question, why does Fred walk so wobbly? Now, on here, Red says, Fred's wobble walk, right? Where he wobbles like that. Look, look at him walking. He's walking. He's walking. Tell me that's not so funny. That is hilarious. A side note. Remember that episode where the, him and his buddy, they have to go do the the, um, the Zanies song, dance, and comedy, and Lamont gets out there. I'm not dancing. I'm not dancing. Hit it. I, the Zanies is so good. But every time he walks, he, where did he get that walk from? Was it, you know, where he looks like he was riding a horse. He looked more like bull legs. They actually said, Red said he, Fred developed that wobbly walk because from the heavy shoes, the show gave him. That is a trivia question you can ask and it will be on our channel eventually. But remember, you're getting the answers here. But that's what it was. It was the wobbly shoes. It was, they, or they, they were so heavy that he walked. He kind of felt like he was like carrying, lifting them. And they were so heavy, he developed that walk. And that's how he got it. And it stuck. And it was part of a staple of Fred Sanford. So that is a bunch of facts about Sanford and Son, the show itself. Fun fact Friday. I hope you enjoyed it. My gosh, 22 minutes in. I, this went faster or longer than I thought. I felt like that it was going to be 10 minutes. I was going to zoom through. So I hope you learned something new. I hope you enjoyed it. Give a like. Give a subscribe and Fred G. Sanford, the G stands for go have a good time this weekend. Not gynecologist. <laughs> I'm trying to come up with different ones Fred has done through the show throughout the, the, the history of our channel whenever we post something new on there. So have a great weekend. Uh, enjoy your Friday and look for more shorts and look for more videos and look for more trivia questions and more polls and everything's coming. Man, this channel is going to keep flourishing, but I can't do anything without you guys. So please comment, like, and get it out there for the rest of the community. Talk to you guys later. Peace.